Uh, welcome to the uh, Coulter's, uh, Wallace Coulter uh, seminar series. Today it's our honor to have Dr. Xinmai Yang uh, from the uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering of University of Kansas. Uh, a little bit background. Uh, Dr. Yang received his uh, PhD from Boston University uh, in 2003. Uh, his dissertation was uh, on focusing on uh, cavitation effect during high intensity focused ultrasound. Uh, after graduation, Dr. Yang did two postdocs. Uh, so the first one, was with National Center for Physical Acoustics and Olimis. Uh, and the second postdoc was uh, with Dr. Li Hong Wang, uh, Dr. Li Hong Wang's lab uh, in Washington University and St. Louis uh, from 2006 to 2008. Then Dr. Yang joined the uh, me mechanical engineering department and the Institute for Bioengineering Research at the University of Kansas. Uh, Dr. Yang has also worked as a visiting scholar at, at the radiology department of the University of Michigan in 2015. I think after that, uh, Dr. Yang shift, shifted his research a little bit toward the uh, therapeutics with ultrasound. So right now, Dr. Uh, Young's research is mainly focused on the uh, uh, on the de uh, development of novel hybrid therapeutic technique, namely uh, photomediated ultrasound therapy. Uh, and he, he is also pushing the technology toward the goal of clinical applications. Uh, yeah, Dr. Young's research is mainly uh, uh, funded by uh, NIH uh, through major research grants. Uh, doc, Dr. Young's uh, topic today is shedding light on ultrasound, photoacoustic mediated ultrasound therapy. Let's welcome Dr. Young. All right. Uh... Thank you, uh, Shulian, for the uh, introduction. So the the topic is shedding light on ultrasound, uh, ultrasound, and uh, was literally basically we shining light uh, when we operating ultrasound the signal. So a uh, technology we call photomediated ultrasound therapy. So a uh, first introduction on this. So what is exactly it is a photomediated ultrasound therapy, uh, which we uh, in short we call PUT or call PUT. It's basically synergistically applying a laser pulses and the ultrasound burst on optic absorptive targets, particularly such like blood vessel. And the, so the mechanism of this basically is to uh, induce and promote cavitation in optically absorptive targets. And when you use a, a short laser pulses, apply to an optically absorptive targets, in this case, such as blood vessel, due to the strong optic absorption, and you can produce very strong photoacoustic wave. Photoacoustic wave itself, basically, it is also an ultrasound wave, right? It's got a positive peak, also negative peak. And uh, people have been studying that, and when this, uh, uh, particularly for photoacoustic wave, it convert to the center of a spherical or cylindrical absorber, you have a, can produce a huge negative peak in the middle of the abs absorber. And that negative peak basically produces a pulling force, which then in that case is uh, you can produce cavitation. So that effect is uh, more commonly known as a photo or mechanical effect. So it is different from photothermal effect. So photothermal effect basically you uh, heat up, sense, uh, heat things up, and then it produces thermally boiling bubble cavitation. But in this case, it's actually through mechanical force. So therefore it's called photo mechanical effect. And uh, uh, the cavitation produced, uh, sometimes people call that a cold bubble because there really is a, a, a the temperature rise increase is minimum. And of course, same time we apply ultrasound to it. 
and uh, we apply ultron burst. So, and uh, ultron itself also have a negative pressure. So the two negative pressure add up together will enhance the cavitation effect. Uh, so of course, when the cavitation effect is enhanced, so then the shear stress and all micro jets produced by those micro bubbles can uh, result a lot of bio effects in a blood vessels or in some other tissues there. And so this is uh, uh, what is uh, uh, how we design this technology. Uh, this is some early results. We actually how we start this. Uh, Technology. So this early, so I was uh, working on the photo imaging and also working on high intensity focus ultrasound, and I was uh, study how to use photo imaging to guide high intensity focus ultrasound. And what we always see here, so if you can see my, you can see my uh, cursor here, right? You can see if you can see here, I, I, what we found is every time when we have a laser on the high intensity focus ultrasound on together, we always have bigger. Bigger laden, so all for high for all we produce bigger uh, layers here, and in the middle there's a black spot, seems some cavitation there, and then when on we found also because high for is basically thermal, it's a thermal therapy, and also with later on we found that the ultra uh, the temperature is enhanced, and so we did a photo uh, cavitation detection. And photo detection technique tells us, okay, uh, uh, when we have laser on, you know, we actually enhance the cavitation signal a lot. So this blue line here, it's a, it's a cavitation signal when ultrasound and the laser was, uh, were on as uh, simultaneously. So you do see very uh, highly enhanced cavitation signal when you use laser and ultrasound together. And remember, in this case, our ultras, uh, our laser in this case is for photo imaging, which is only uh, five nanosecond pulse and uh, which 20 my, milli, uh, 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 milli joule per centimeter square. So which is basically, it's, it's not supposed to do any damage to the tissue. It's for, because it's for imaging purpose. But still in this case, we see huge enhancement in the cavitation. So we, uh, from there, uh, we in, uh, look into this effect and we do some further experiment here. So there's one thing we can show here. Uh, uh, so how the how you combine laser and ultrasound for enhanced uh, surface ablation. So on the on the right hand side here, this it's, this is a phantom here, and uh, this is a special made phantom which is a half black, half white. So on the left side is black. Basically, it's going to be highly absorptive for for laser light. On the right hand side is white color. So it's it's because it's white, it does not really absorb any uh, light. We, of course, in this case, we use green light. And if you do a scan here, use photo acoustic imaging scan here on the on the left hand side figure here, here show you photo acoustic signal. Of course, is very strong from black color the phantom, and the photo acoustic signal you always have no photo acoustic signal from white color phantom, which basically is no uh, because it's there is no optic absorption. And of course, in this case, when you found okay, when we apply laser and ultrasound, which in this case is part together, you can see the surface damage on the black part only, okay, only on the black part of uh, tissue phantom because of strong optic absorption. On the white part of tissue phantom, there's no damage because there's no optic absorption. So what this one gives us basically, there's technology. Again, it's still an ultrasound technology, but with this ultrasound technology, ultrasound therapy, it is based on optical contrast. So it's kind of like a, you know, we added selectivity to traditional ultrasound therapy because traditional ultrasound therapy, no matter thermal therapy or cavitation therapy, has no much has no much uh, selectivity. But now. Uh, with this, uh, uh, with concurrent use of laser, we are able to just remove a tissue which is highly optically uh, absorptive. So from that, uh, we also look in, in the physics first, and uh, so this is actually physics photomechanic effect, and you have on this here, you, you can see if you have a, a optical absorber here. In this case, I show this one, the cylindrical absorber, and you shining light on it, it will produce photoacoustic wave. And uh, you got the diverging wave, the diverging photoacoustic wave. So basically, that's what we detect for photoacoustic imaging. But in the same time, there's also a converging photoacoustic wave. So some wave in the wave always go two directions. Some of the wave go to the middle. And when the wave goes to the middle, it's actually going to produce a huge negative peak here. So the, on the here, there's a 
uh, on the right uh, right hand corner, lo lower corner here, that's actually calculated number here. And you can see a, a huge negative peak here. And how large this negative peak is? So we did some uh, rough estimation here. Initial photo acoustic wheel, just use these simple equations. We can find, okay, photo acoustic wheel, if we, for green light in your blood vessel, so if we uh, assume it's 20 mini joule per centimeter square Florence, and we actually can produce a P0, so start, uh, start pressure, P0 is gonna be a 0 0.93 megapascal at the surface. And when this uh, pressure convert to the middle of that blood vessel, you actually get can get a negative peak of larger than four megapascal, which is very significant. And uh, of course, it's li very likely to produce cavitation. And uh, here on also, I went into the literature and found this a very interesting high-speed camera picture, which it took by a uh, uh, Potov in 1999. This is actually a water droplet, and they just shining light on it. And then actually, uh, because high-speed camera, it's very nice. You can see actually see the uh, wave front produce photoacoustic wave produce in this water uh, in this water droplet. You can see actually the uh, this is uh, outside here that's a diverging wave. Inside here you can somehow see this uh, converging wave. Okay, so it's actually when the wave uh, converts to the middle of this droplet, you do see a black spot. Where in this case is is bubble. It's going to be form a bubble cavitation there. Oh, sorry. I'll go back. So then when you have this bubble produced, so what this bubble can do here in this case, so now it looks some uh, bubble dynamics here. Uh, this is a calculator mixes equation. It's one of common equation to calculate the bubble dynamics for nonlinear oscillation. And uh, so basically all we need to change is on uh, here this applied pressure part, because right now we do have a photoacoustic uh, wave. And of course, in this case, we, we have a, a plot photoacoustic wave and also some wave together. So here simulation tells us if we only apply a laser, so basically only have photoacoustic wave and uh, the bubble, uh, originally if I assume in the bubble, in the, in the blood, there's a 50 nanometer bubble and uh, then the bubble, the radius will become, you can increase by 1.8 times. And if you only use ultrasound, the maximum bubble radius is going to increase, increase 1.3 times. But when you, if you use laser and ultrasound together, combine this together, suddenly the bubble basically blew up, <laughs> become 150 times. So it's a huge bubble. From a small bubble, become a huge bubble. And in this case, we call that inertial cavitation because it's got inert, very strong inertial force. Uh, from the from the surrounding water, you think a small bubble become a huge bubble. Basically, when you become a huge bubble, it's actually going to push surrounding water away. And when you push that away, but of course, the water like uh, going to work as a spring. When you push them away, it will come back. When it come back, because the water has very uh, huge uh, huge density, so that's going to that's going to see this huge collapse here. So it can produce very strong mechanical force when it collapses. And so that's, uh, that's going to, of course, do some mechanical damage uh, in that spot. And so uh, later on, of course, uh, we also found uh, the effect of the delay time when you how to use laser and ultrasound together, which is very critical. So uh, the laser and the ultrasound need to be synchronized at a particular phase delay time, then so you can have an enhanced cavitation signal. So here, that's the, this is a uh, ultrasound burst, uh, the ultrasound signal. And then when you delete, change the delete time, so only when the laser pulse is synchronized at a negative ultrasound pulse, negative uh, pressure, then you can see this enhancement. If it's uh, at a positive, positive phase, then you do not really see cavitations. So that just means this, this delete time, we need to well control that. And uh, so this is uh, from there, we are based on this mechanism, we design this uh, uh, system here. So we have this function generator, then we, uh, the center here is this delay generator. The delay generator actually is gonna control the uh, func function generator to produce a signal. Uh, then that would be sent to high full transducer for to control the ultrasound, the phase of ultrasound. On the other side of the delay generator, we trigger our laser system. So basically tell when the laser system is gonna fire laser so that, uh, as a laser pulse and the ultrasound burst that will be synchronized, precisely synchronized. And we want this laser to be fired at the negative peak uh, of ultrasound. And so with this setup, we uh, we also did, we first we did a couple of uh, uh, in vitro experiment. So this is a in vitro experiment from uh, uh, in a tube, in a tube filled with human blood. 
This is for passive cavitation detection. So we basically use an ultrasound detector to detect the cavitation signal produced in this case. And we found out okay, the first one, when you first hear that's a laser, laser pulse. So, um, and uh, when you have this laser pulse, you first, before you apply laser pulse, you don't really see much cavitation signal here. Then when you apply laser pulse, you see this huge signal here. And that signal, when we do some, uh, uh, we look at the frequency spectral, you see those huge uh, broadband signals, which basically is indicating it's an inertial cavitation dominated. And uh, then it's got a transition area here in the middle here. So the, uh, after a while, because the laser is now it's gone, it's only ultrasound drives that, the bubble may just break up into small pieces, small bubbles. And so you have this transition, a matrix of inertial cavitation to non-inertial cavitation. Non-inertial cavitation basically means a small oscillation cavitations. And then of course, come to the, uh, the last phase, the third phase here, that's a, a somewhat after a, long, a little bit longer time after laser pulse. Uh, then this time it become non-inertial cavitation dominant. And uh, on this uh, frequency spectral, you can see clearly harmonics and uh, particularly those subharmonics, which is a signature of a, a linear bubble. So basically become non-linearly, but it's the, the, the opposite oscillates linearly, small oscillation bubbles. So those are some uh, uh, bubble oscillations. Of course, this is from an uh, experiment. And uh, so this is some other experiment uh, data. We are trying to uh, find out when the inertial cavitation will, will occur. And this uh, basically shows with the uh, increased uh, the laser energy here uh, for the same, at the same, uh, at same ultrasound pressure, when you increase the laser energy, the cavitations, uh, inertial cavitation probability will increase. So it's very likely to increase uh, uh, cavitation. So again, all those things basically shows there's a, when you combine laser and ultrasound and use it correctly, we can enhance, uh, strongly enhance cavitation uh, in, in blood, in optical absorptive uh, target. And uh, so here's for some uh, other in vitro experiment. We just uh, showed the, how the face information, we will, how the, uh, synchronization between laser and ultrasound affect uh, cavitation signal. So in this case, the uh, first top here, it's uh, you basically synchronize the uh, laser at the negative uh, at the negative peak of ultrasound. On the middle here, we synchronize the uh, uh, laser at the positive peak of ultrasound. And uh, here at the bottom here, that is actually measured the cavitation threshold. As you can see, this on and off for cavitation signal. And uh, by the way, so on the right-hand side here, I'm showing you uh, this our theoretical prediction. So what I'm telling you, to me, they actually matches very well. Uh, so we pretty much see now 100%, but it's very well, uh, very well agree with each other. So again, those basically all prove our uh, hypothesis from the very beginning, laser plus ultrasound will enhance cavitation and also the laser plus ultrasound need to be synchronized properly in order to have this uh, enhancement. And so here are some experiment, uh, real experiment in the, uh, uh, in this tube, in the middle here's a tube and we have, uh, have a human blood flow through that. Uh, so this ultrasound imaging uh, so here's it's actually a movie here. You can see with ultrasound only, you don't really see anything here. Uh, then you have laser on. We have laser stuff here. Here laser on, you can start so with those black, uh, those uh, light up. So those are cavitation bubbles. And then of course we turn off the ultrasound only with laser by itself. You do not really see bubbles. Again, let's just show you. Uh, uh, from this image, it shows really when you have a laser plus ultrasound together, you do have a. Uh, detectable cavitation, strong, uh, much more enhanced cavitation activities. And uh, so from that, we actually went on to do the, the more uh, 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 numerical simulation. So we, if we have this enhanced cavitation, so what this cavitation can do, right? What, what is the effect of this cavitation on a blood vessel? Uh, so here, this is a model we use a console to do, to do this. This is a uh, we have blood vessel here, and uh, so in the assume uh, okay in the middle of this in the in this vessel there's a bubble here. Of course, that's a very simple model here. The bubble going to oscillate, right? and uh, when the bubble oscillates, and what we know the bubble is it's mechanical. It's mechanical force. So particularly two things people have been focused on in the past. So one is this circumferential stress. The other one is 
shear stress. Basically, this only two directions. So this uh, one stress is going to uh, also has shear stress, also reduce stress. So those three stresses, and uh, uh, those stress have a different uh, uh, responsibilities here. So particularly for vessel rupture, it's going to be caused by these uh, two uh, normal stresses, and the shear stress actually sometimes more uh, critical. Can, uh, it's going to be responsible for a lot of a bio effect. So from this simulation, we're trying to calculate how much shear stress and the circumstantial stress we have produced by a bubble in a blood vessel. So here's hear some uh, a model about this uh, uh, numerical model about the bubble oscillations in a uh, in blood vessel. So very beginning, you have a laser plot ultrasound. You have an initiated bubble. So bubble very beginning, you have a bubble uh, cavity that occurs is in the middle of the. Uh, vessel and then uh, after bubble cavity occurs, there's immediately there's process called rectified diffusion. So that process bubble, small bubble will become big bubble. Bubble will grow up, and of course, in during the same time when bubble grows up, bubble also drift because in it, the bubble is air, right? It's air content air. It's air in the liquid. It's going to rise up. Urea is come come to the surface of the inner surface of blood vessel. When you get closer. So, of course, when you get closer, it's going to have a much more uh, impact on the blood vessel wall. So here's this, uh, this another theoretical uh, simulation here. I'm going to show very beginning phase one here. And uh, you have a bubble just initiated. And then this bubble increase. Uh, this is bubble oscillation, that's the oscillation. And then after a certain time, the bubble become a, a protein equilibrium size. So it can remain on that size inside the blood vessel and uh, in this case still going to be driven by ultrasound and uh, so uh, we said we did some uh, simulations here first uh, if the bubble is in the center of the uh, vessel if the bubble is center of the vessel we calculate the, the uh, maximum circumferential stress uh, in this case actually uh, Again, one thing is that when you have uh, this ultrasound alone, which is uh, this lens ultrasound alone, then this is very low. And when you have a laser plus ultrasound together, obviously the uh, circumferential stress will increase. But the vessel rupture is uh, usually from literature, you found the rest uh, stress for rest of rupture is about 800 kilopascal. So this is still much less than this ratio. So basically, means that if a bubble is in the center of a vessel, it's unlikely to cause a vessel to rupture. And on the other hand, if you see this maximum shear stress, maximum shear stress, again, when you have a laser plus ultrasound together, you do see enhanced shear stress. but the shear stress here, this green line plot, plot here, is 15 uh, Pascal, which is for normal blood flow. So uh, uh, the, if the bubble is in the center here, so the produced uh, shear stress is actually usually do not really uh, exceed the nor uh, shear stress produced by normal blood flow. And unless you go to very high pressure here, and of course, you, if you use, use high pressure, it's, it's going to do a lot of other damage too. So this is when the bubble is in the center of the blood vessel. And then, of course, we come down to also study the, when what happens if a bubble drifts to the uh, to the to, towards the uh, vessel wall, to closer to the vessel wall here. And uh, here, so the, this number of uh, stress we calculate on those uh, different locations. And in this case, uh, if a bubble is closer off center and close to the vessel wall, and uh, then we actually calculate here again, this is for the, uh, on, on the left hand side here, that's the circumferential stress. And uh, uh, even when the bubble is off the center, close to the vessel wall, in this case, our calculation, we found that actually uh, the uh, uh, produced uh, circumferential stress is usually do not really larger than uh, uh, rupture stress. Of course, it's a, when you work and use a very small ultrasound pressure here, right? But, uh, but the thing is uh, the shear stress is going to be completely different. And even if uh, you use a very small ultrasound pressure here, uh, produce a shear stress, it's uh, huge here, which is at more than several thousand uh, pascals here. So, and it's much, much more than the uh, shear stress produced during normal blood flow.
And uh, so this result basically is confirms, and uh, which is a, a, a hypothesis that people have been thinking is a, a cavitation produced bio effect is mainly due to the shear stress produced by cavitation, because when you have bubble oscillates, it can produce huge shear stress. And also from a biology point of view, shear stress seems like a, a uh, a lot of cells or signal pass pathways is very sensitive to shear stress. So that's, a, a bit, again, this similar simulation results just a proof that uh, it is true in this case, when we use laser and ultrasound, we can hugely increase the shear stress produced by a cavitation. And uh, well, the vessel can still largely remain uh, intact if we choose the correct parameter. So here, some uh, of course from there, when uh, we come back to here, do some uh, further experiment. So this is an experiment on the uh, on a chicken embryo. Uh, 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 we say chicken embryo, so it's a very nice model because we uh, will be able to single out uh, blood vessels here, and we have this model here. This in this middle middle here, that's before this is our treatment area, and uh, in the middle here, then we. Plus use ultrasound plus laser shining on that. And uh, so you can see immediately after that, you see this blood vessel basically shrink and here it's kind of closed up. Because the reason for that is because again, you have uh, this bubble oscillates that produce shear stress. The shear stress will, in this case, we, we actually, uh, we think it's because the shear stress is, is going to kill into cellular cell. And when you say into cellular cell got damaged, so vessel will think, Right, so bio biological system will think that the vessels got damaged. So they're gonna start this coagulation cascade, you know, shrink the to uh, shrink the uh, blood vessel or develop blood clots there. The, the, you know, the purpose for that is to minimize bleeding from this spot. Of course, as a result of this, this blood vessel is gonna close. And here are some statistics here. We do show uh, this and it's uh, statistic significant and also it's particularly related to a uh, blood vessel because uh, to the parameter. When you go to a little higher en en energy here, for them, uh, laser, en uh, laser fluence becomes six millijoule per centimeter squared. We actually start seeing a hemorrhage here. So if, so we do need to find the correct parameter here. So we minimize hemorrhage, but also gonna cause a desired bio effect. And on the other side, we also know, uh, because it's based on optic contrast, and we also know that uh, for, uh, there's two types of hemoglobin, right? A hemo, a deoxyhemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin. They have different absorptions. And uh, for we can, because our technology part, technology is based on optic absorption, basically means potentially we can target uh, hemoglobin or hemo, uh, deoxyhemoglobin or hemoglobin, which basically means we can target, target remove either one or other separately. So this is one uh, example here, again, the chicken embryo here. And on the top here, this is on the particular wavelength, we target the one here. So, and uh, we use this technology and we treat both vessels at the same time. And of course, after a certain time, you only see the venous is got treated. That's because again, at this particular wavelength, uh, vein is strongly absorbed light. So we can produce more cavitation in, the, in this vein here. And uh, so that is also, then we can produce more cavitation in the vein and cavitation produce bio effect will shut down this, uh, the vein. And of course, on the other side, if we switch the wavelengths, switch to another wavelength in this case, uh, artery have a stronger absorption. And uh, as you can see this after a certain time, this artery will be shut down. So the, which, this is a, um, this experiment basically show you with the photo mediated ultrasound accelerator, we do have a selectivity, which is uh, based on optic absorption. We can selectively uh, remove, uh, remove uh, blood vessels based on their absorptions. And uh, so uh, we also did this one on, uh, on this, uh, try this experiment on a, first with on a rabbit ears here. So that's a rabbit ear. This is a, uh, this plot here is a blood perfusion map. So here is where we can before part and after part, you can do see some blood vessel here is gone. And here are some uh, histologies. We actually uh, uh, untreated here. This, so here is blood vessel, which is uh, uh, in tech. So sorry, I see, I see a lot of uh, questions here. Or do I have some questions I have to answer here? Okay, Shulian, if there's questions here, uh, please just uh, stop me, all right? <laughs> okay, because I'm not able to 
monitor those questions at the same time. <laughs> yeah, we can do it after the talk. Okay, 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 yeah. Particularly, I don't see any audience here. <laughs> if anyone raise hand, I don't even know that. <laughs> okay, so uh, the other side, on the other side is for the treated uh, treated area here. So you can see we, 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 we for the histology here, you do see the, the blood vessel is blocked here. So uh, so we think it's a uh, blood, maybe it's blood clot or something else has happened to this uh, to this vessel and it was blood stop, is blood flow stopped. So this is the initial result on the ear. Oh, and uh, then we have uh, we target start develop the technology on the on the eye model, uh, so tr to try to remove the blood micro uh, vessel at the bottom of the eye. I think I just uh, I didn't include one significant slide here, uh, because uh, if some of you working in this area, there's particularly two type of disease. Uh, the one is called uh, diabetes retinopathy. The other one is uh, age-related uh, macular degeneration, which is both eye significant eye disease. One is number one cause for blindness. The other one is number two cause for blindness. And both of those diseases actually is going to develop. People will develop abnormal micro vessels at the bottom of the eye. And those micro vessels at the bottom of the eye need to be removed, and because uh, it is, yeah, they are abnormal vessels. Abnormal vessels basically means they are leaking. It's constantly going to have a liquid or blood leaking out of those blood vessels at the bottom of the eye, and uh, for a long time it's going to cause uh, retinal detachment. So that's that's a reason people get blind from that. And uh, so again, both cases um, probably uh, kind of for, for more than half of blindness in the U.S. right now. And the traditional technology, people can uh, use a laser technology to burn. You can basically burn the burn a hole at the bottom of the retina. And uh, when you do that, of course, then that particular spot, uh, so all cells will be killed and uh, become blind. People will have uh, some blind spot in their region. And particularly for the macular degeneration cases, because that is on the macular, which is the most sensitive region of the eye. Right? You cannot really burn, burn that region. If you burn that region, people will lose their central vision. And so there's actually, uh, right now, the technology to treat that uh, macular degeneration, it is use an injection of uh, anti uh, VEGF, vascular uh, VE, as, uh, vascular endocellular growth factor, anti VEGF. Uh, uh, therapy inject agent for uh, inject that agent that is a monthly injection basically put a needle in the eye you inject those uh, inject those drugs into the eye and uh, still that technology only can help about half per, uh, 50 percent of patient and so there's the that's, uh, there's a huge amount of need here so we think okay because the reason there is trying to stop blood, the micro blood vessels, so we can use this technology to hopefully can treat this condition. So that's why I designed this system here. And uh, this is actually a quite complicated system because uh, you talk about the eye. It's very small. We only have a small window to work with. So we have a laser light here. With our design here, we have a, uh, the ultrasound, uh, ultrasound, wide ultrasound beam, and also collaborate with a uh, narrow laser beam in the middle here. And so on the right hand side, so some uh, uh, schematic of the optical and the uh, optical pass. And so that, so this is a real picture here. So that you can see the middle here. So on the tape here, this is a focused ultrasound transducer. This transducer have a middle hole here. So it's a, so that light can go through the hole here. There's a lot of light beam here. We have one target beam here, so which will allow us to know uh, which point we are treating. And then you have a treat, treatment light coming here, which is gonna perform the treatment. And also have a CCD camera here, allow us to take pictures during, during uh, treatment so that we can see the treatment effect. And so on the on the right hand side here, just show what is the, uh, 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 the phone that's camera picture at, uh, at the bottom of the rabbit eye. We use rabbit model here because the rabbit eye is bigger. They think about it because we are using ultrasound technology, ultrasound technology, is, is, transducer itself is, is, is quite big. This transducer itself is like a six centimeter across and even so we need big eyes there. So rabbits happen to have a big eye. So that's why we choose rabbit. And uh, so here are some initial results. We just first try this one on some normal uh, rabbits. 
And so this is cryo vessels, cryo layer, because again, we are trying to majorly target uh, macular degeneration, which is a micro vessel, abnormal micro vessel in a cryo layer. So this cryo layer, and we did a treatment. After, after treatment, you start seeing this area, which is a little bit fuzzy. So probably, you know, again, because there's cavitation effect inside the blood vessel. So those, we can do did some damage to those vessels in from, uh, in, from inside. Then after one week, those vessels start to vanish. Micro vessels, smaller vessels, large vessels seem still remains. And uh, this, uh, uh, so this was the results can be come down to about part of four after uh, four weeks. So four weeks here, and again, you see those smaller vessels gone, and there's still larger vessels seems uh, still there. So which actually, of course, it's it's actually good thing for us because in real case we we really want to target the micro vessels. We don't want to shut down the big vessels because if you shut down big vessels then that's not a problem because it's, the tissue is entirely going to die from that. So you want to shut, shut down, only shut down small vessels there. So this is some initial result. We do show some feasibilities on this uh, on normal blood vessels. This is a, a ICG uh, angiography for that same animal. So you can, this, this is a common technology using ophthalmology, which is a, uh, much easier, just uh, more convenient to see a uh, perfusion at the bottom of the eye. So basically show the same thing. Uh, should blood vessel much more clearly. And uh, so this is from the normal vessels and here are some stuff for statistics and we did uh, use laser and ultrasound of come together. Uh, we show several therapeutic effect and uh, with laser alone and uh, with uh, ultrasound uh, uh, only, we don't really see any damage because we do use uh, the la uh, laser energy, the ultrasound energy we use here is very pretty low. Individually are safe. And so there's some furthermore the histologies here, and uh, we didn't really see any damage in this uh, at this stage for this normal blood uh, for this normal rabbit, and also then half that of course we just normal blood uh, blood vessel we try the different disease models first we try this uh, uh, suture induced corneal. A uh, new vascularization model. We use a suture model because it's on the corneal, and the corneal is the easiest at the surface of the eye. And when you do the treatment, you will know as actually every time everything becomes probably ten times harder when you try to do something at the bottom of the eye because bottom of the eye is, is the window is limited. But on the surface the eye is much easier, so we can do basically put a suture here, and then you can you can do some. Uh, uh, even remove sutures, so there's some uh, micron vessels, new vascularization vessels can remain here. And so on this, we can test our technology on those abnormal tissues here. On the top here, we show our past treatment here. Uh, we can show immediately after treatment, we basically remove those uh, uh, new vascularizations, micron vessels. And but for the controls there, it's, it's uh, the uh, suspended up to like, uh, we monitor for one month, so still. Uh, there, so basically, obviously, show the technology works not only on normal vessel, also on the diseased one, diseased vessel. Okay, so that is on this part and for this some uh, <laughs> statistics because the treatment we have to show some statistical results that uh, everything is significant. And uh, so from that, of course, that's uh, that's on the surface of the eye corneal, and uh, the the end point we really want to do some at the bottom of the eye. So we first. The, we uh, try this. Uh, this is uh, create some new vascularizations at the retinal, which is at the bottom of the eye. And we use uh, two rabbits. One's New Zealand white rabbits, the other one is a uh, uh, dark belted pigmented rabbit. So those are two different rabbits. Uh, New Zealand white rabbits are, is all albino rabbits, which does not have a, a, a melanin linear, uh, linear. Uh, layer, so it does not have a color pigmented at the bottom of the eye, so it's easier for the ultrasound for for the laser to propagate because it, it does not have a, those black pigment. And but uh, this uh, pigment rabbit, of course, it's a little bit hard because you have those uh, uh, melanin layers there. Uh, that's black. It's going to block blood. Uh, going to block laser light here, and uh, so this is a, this is a model. This is a first, of course, actually spent a lot of time to establish this model. Uh, it's uh, something called DA, uh, DL double A uh, induced model, and uh, we have this model that can be consistently uh, uh, for like uh, sixteen weeks for four four months basically. And uh, so these are some treatment results. First, this treatment results for New Zealand white rabbits, and. Uh, 
So first topic here is uh, found as photo and then the different of uh, different imaging technology. <laughs> Look at the bottom of the eye after before after and after treatment. And uh, so I guess all we can uh, see here is uh, for each treatment we do see some ink uh, decrease in the uh, from this plus some decrease in the density of the new vascularization. Uh, the other thing I also want to mention here, you can see this for this New, new Zealand white rabbit, we do see actually sometimes frequently we see some hemorrhage at the bottom of the eye. So that's a problem with this New Zealand white rabbit. And we think because in this case, New Zealand white rabbit does not have this uh, pigment in the in the eye. So it's very easy to you, guys, you probably can deliver too much laser any to the bottom of the eye. So that's going to cause some hemorrhage here. But overall, the results are still encouraged. Uh, it's uh, it's encouraging uh, because we do anyway. We're going to see some statistics later on. So that's for uh, New Zealand wild for the uh, Dutch biotic the pigmented rabbits here, and so so basically uh, similar similarly. And after treatment, we do see some. So if you can see, particularly on this uh, last uh, the bottom line here, that is uh, F uh, fluorescence uh, in, uh, and angiography. So you can see here, it's a, you can see some of the density of this uh, uh, new vascularization uh, is reduced. This is, of course, remember, this is only one single treatment with only single treatment. And, and in this case, we don't really see much hemorrhage. That's actually good thing because I've seen this because they have pigment there. So pigment, we actually can reduce the laser energy. And uh, of course, sometimes we do see some uh, pigment later got damaged. That's another issue, of course, uh, that we have to address later on. <clears throat> and uh, so here are some, uh, we try the quantification that is for, for, this, uh, for both rabbits. And uh, uh, we start with 100% New Zealand white rabbits after immediate treatment. So it's going to have a decrease in, uh, in the density of uh, micron vessels. And uh, then after one week, you have some rebounding, and then somehow it will become a uh, steady state. So overall, we see a lot of decrease in the uh, new vascularization. And uh, for uh, Dutch belted uh, pigment rabbit, so same thing, and uh, the rebounding here seems a little bit more here. And But again, over the uh, uh, the period of six weeks, it's actually reduced. So the, and the density of new, uh, new uh, vascularization reduced here. And uh, so here are some uh, statistic, uh, uh, histology results here. And uh, uh, this is, we do see actually some uh, uh, atrophy here, retinal atrophy here, but uh, which we, we believe is this time, we believe is mainly induced by original model because we use this DILAA model itself actually can produce a retinal or atrophy. And uh, so this actually, so for each of I show two here. The top one is, is uh, a moderately atrophy. The bottom one is a uh, severe atrophy here. But uh, if you just compare these uh, uh, six weeks after part treatment or before part treatment, they actually uh, pretty uh, similar. So it did not really see a very obviously damage in this case. So at least at this stage, we think it's still, it's still very encouraging. So it seems the safety is fine. So this is a, a department at the application at the eye. Okay, I think my time is, seems like a quick. So there's another, uh, the other project I've been working on so using the same technology with uh, trying to divide using combined laser and ultrasound to, uh, to uh, dissolve blood clot. So, and uh, based this technology, actually, we call it give a new name. It's called ultrasound assisted endovascular laser therapy, uh, which is basically endovascular laser based part. So, same thing. Uh, but we have now we have to use a laser fiber to deliver light because, well, when you work with light, you also know light have a penetration problem. Can, in soft tissue, cannot penetrate very deep. But the, with a laser fiber, it actually can pretty much go anywhere in the body. And people do that all the time. And so, in this case, we you use laser fiber to deliver light into the uh, blood cloud in the blood vessel, which can be very deep. You can use this to treat a different thrombolysis or treat a stroke. And we deliver ultrasound from eye outside of the body. 
And uh, so here, this is the an uh, in vitro experiment. We did this in a tube. So there's a tube here, create blood, uh, play blood clot here, and then you have fiber. Fiber, and then this is a Doppler, also Doppler show you after a while, you do see this blood flow will, will recover because uh, uh, the blood clot be removed. Let me go next. Okay, so this is some, uh, of course, uh, in vitro results. And uh, the results here, again, we see the everything in the fluorence here. Uh, when you have increased fluorence here, if we without ultrasound, you don't really see much increase uh, in, uh, in the blood flow because the blood the flow is stopped, blocked by blood clot. But then when you apply ultrasound here, uh, you can see this uh, the blood flow going to recover because, because again that's the reason for that is because you're going to induce cavitation and when the cavitation oscillates and when it breaks it's going to break all the blood uh, break the blood clot and recover the uh, blood flow so from there there's some uh, further experiment uh, we did uh, this experiment uh, in vitro or in vivo experiment on rabbits and so we create this model on the rabbit's uh, jugular veins, basically on the jugular vein, expose the jugular vein, create a, put a, induce a blood the claw in that region. And then uh, we uh, insert a catheter with a fiber here. So insert into the blood clot to fire laser to it, and also with ultrasound, opposite, op operating ultrasound from outside the body, non-invasively, and synchronize laser and ultrasound together, try to see what happened. And so here we actually on this on this particular experiment we worked on like 17 rabbits here. So those are as group informations and and particularly one thing I want to point out here, uh, our ultrasound the pressure we only use a 1.3 megapascal at a 0 uh, 0.5 megahertz frequency, and it's only five cycle burst. And this is this is actually fairly low uh, ultrasound pressure. And if you calculate the mechanical index, it's only like 1.8. So for those of you who are familiar with ultrasound imaging, you know the safety limit actually is for imaging purposes actually 1.9. Or basically means our ultrasound the, itself is very very safe. Just by itself, it, it only have a mechanical index of 1.8. It's actually lower than the uh, imaging. Uh, the upper limit of imaging uh, uh, energy used for uh, ultrasound. And of course, laser energy is also, we use maximum here is eight millijoule per centimeter squared at uh, 532 nanometer, which is also less than the safety limit. The safety limit, safety limit is 20 millijoule per centimeter squared. So both separately, they are very, very safe. So very low energy level. So that's another feature of this technology. And of course, after treatment, we do see here recovery here. And for this, uh, for treatment uh, with ultrasound laser uh, uh, combining group, we do see uh, we uh, seven rabbits and for uh, five rabbits completely, either completely recovered or like at least 50% uh, recovery. There's two rabbits kind of like all layers have very poor uh, recovery, only recover from this on the, on the right hand side of here, you can see they only recover like 6.2%. And uh, well, of course, it's treatment. Not, nothing is really perfect, but it's still very encouraging. And the uh, statistics is very significant because when you use on ultrasound only or use laser only, you do not see any recovery because uh, the laser energy and the ultrasound energy we use is very, very small. And uh, here's furthermore statistics have been shows here this is this significance when you use a laser and a plus uh, laser plus ultrasound for removing a blood clot. It's going to see greatly enhanced uh, thrombolysis efficiency, and that's the one of treatment results from a uh, from one of treatment group which is partially recovered here. Of course, uh, uh, we did the treatment by ourselves, so as a, the, the technician did this one. I mean, anyway, that's, that's how, how good he can, he can do here. There's still some residues here. And uh, well, in this case, I think well, as we improve our technology, it should be have potential to completely remove those residues. So those are for the blood clot. That's so, okay. I guess I got to summarize, <laughs> summarize everything up. And uh, so we have a laser plus ultrasound that does have a, a great potential for therapy based on optical uh, contrast. And it's it's a safe because it's both laser energy and uh, ultrasound energy is uh, smaller. Uh, it's lower than, uh, it's smaller than the safety limit and have a high selectivity contrast. And uh, you really have a better, you can really have a better control on cavitation. Okay, so again, the bottom, I, the idea is here is we, 
we add C-like activity to ultrasound therapy. Okay, ultrasound therapy itself does not have C-like activity, but we know we have, with laser added, we do have C-like activity for ultrasound therapy. So we can do more precise thera therapeutic uh, treatment. And then we have some, of course, potential applications, micron vessel removing, which we showed you on blood clot removing. And uh, we also <laughs> work on a number of other things like a tattoo removing, uh, port one sting removing, so those call uh, cosmetic uh, applications, and other applications, uh, other directions, because this technology, naturally, it can be combined with photoacoustic imaging, because we do use the same type, same laser, exact same laser with photoacoustic image, right? So naturally, it uh, can become a serenostic system. And of course, we need to work on work out the therapeutic side of first, and then we talk about the combining. But anyway, those are the uh, future directions. So from that, okay, so here's here some acknowledged part. So there's a number of uh, research grants we received uh, received from the past uh, to support those projects, and I have some uh, several collaborators on those uh, uh, projects. So I want to acknowledge. So uh, after that, I, will, I guess I can take any questions. Yeah, maybe I ask a question first. Uh, when you do eye imaging, uh, the uh, the the area is controlled by the ultrasound, right? I I I, I saw your laser is not focused, so the the treated area is controlled by the ultrasound, right? Yeah, that's the purpose. We're trying to make a one because if you make two, we you can make two to confocal both, confocal, but that's gonna be very hard. So the idea is we use an ultrasound, give an ultrasound background, larger ultrasound background, then you use laser, focus laser, because the laser focusing is very easy. It's relatively easy to control. So yeah, that's uh, purpose. Yeah, then there's uh, some questions about the depth, uh, um, because you want to treat the retinal blood vessels, but if you cannot control the depth, is it possible you will also damage the choroidal vessels. So that's one thing. Another thing is uh, if you think about uh, uh, like human, right? So you have pigment, we have melanin in RP cells. Yes, so is yes. it possible you also damage the RP cells? Yes, that's that's the reason we use that the dark belted pigments, uh, pigment rabbits. I I think at this time I uh, we do see some damage there, and there's something we have to address. So how that's going to happen? And the other thing about the uh, about that uh, uh, focus on the layer issue. That's another thing we can do because we also can control the. Uh, control the treatment through the synchronization phase. And you know, remember you have an ultrasound burst come in, it's not treatment is not everywhere. It's only occurs at a negative peak of the ultrasound. So uh, if you do that correctly, you can, although you have a long burst ultrasound, but that ultrasound negative peak can only cover the region you want, okay? So if that's the case, at that particular time, you fire a laser so you can potentially, uh, you can, uh, further improve the, uh, to control the treatment on the depth direction. Well, of course, uh, that's another issue of really being how, how, how good you can control right, that. Right, right. So, that's, so that, that's actually really, it's lots, really it's a lot of cool. stuff. Yes. To another question is when you want to control the depth, right? So, yes. uh, do you need to adjust the, uh, the delay of the laser or you can fully see, you know, the, the delay. So how can you uh, how can you know the delay? So you, you do you well, need delays, to adjust? Uh... What well, delay is the issue because we use ultrasound, right? We, we will assume laser travels much faster than ultrasound. So it's kind of instantaneously compared to ultrasound. In this case, we, we, when you shining the first you shining light, you get a photoacoustic wave from the target. And from photoacoustic, photoacoustic wave itself, it's, it's ultrasound too, right? From that photoacoustic wave, you actually can measure the delay time you need from your ultrasound transducer to the target. <laughs> So from that, I will know exactly how much time I need for my ultrasound to travel to my target. So then from that, we can calculate, okay, that's the exact time um, I know, okay, my ultrasound is on my target right now. So then I fire laser light. So that's why, well, that's how we control this uh, phase information. I see the tolerance will be uh, in a microsecond level, I guess, because your ultrasound is 0 0.5 microhertz. Right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Have you considered uh, using the technology to treat cancer? 
Yes, we of course we we think a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, the uh, every sentence is it, it's depth limitation. Also, the other thing, I mean, it also comes with the collaborators, and <laughs> we need to have a good collaborators do this. Thing. You know, uh, the reason we focus on the eye because uh, I see one of our collaborator, Dr. Yanni Paulas, he's an ophthalmologist, and he's very enthusiastic to work with us, and you know. Uh, you mean you too, me too. We are we are same. We're technologists. We did a lot of technology, right? <laughs> and to in order to use those technology for particular application, we really need a clinical uh, collaborators. Something someone come to us, they need those stuff. And uh, yes, we have been trying to do something on the cancers there. And uh, for number one, so for cancer situation, it's still you have a limitation on depth there, right? Depth. Of course, you can. Some people talk about it. You can use fibers to pull their. Uh, but still, well, I guess we need some very good collaborators to <laughs> to know, uh, to tell us it's going to be significant. Uh, Technology-wise, it's not a problem. Right. So there's a possibility to use it uh, in, uh, during surgery. It's, uh, uh, you know, uh, during surgery, when you remove the major part yeah. of the cancer, maybe you can treat the, the other part. So that's another. Yes, exactly. Well, yes, exactly. So yes, Samson, we Samson, we yeah, we we, and we tried a little bit, and uh, again, it's just uh, you need to produce significant data. You know, you know, you know how we do research. Yeah, you need the money to go to move forward <laughs> a little bit, and there uh, cannot really form a strong collaboration. And they have to stop there. No questions. Okay, then we thank Dr. Yang uh, okay. for this wonderful talk. I think it's it's pretty interesting you know com combining photons with ultrasound all right all right thank okay. you thank see you in two hours okay bye bye, bye.